Um, the explosion in Beirut, in the the port of Lebanon. It's uh, reportedly. Uh, I, I listened to uh, Al Jazeera, and reportedly this port has 80% of all the incoming goods into Lebanon. There was a, a huge grain storage next to the explosion containing the grains for about three months and two um, grain mills, to, to, so flour factories were right next to it and they are all destroyed now. Uh, for so far, 4,000 people were injured, 100 people uh, killed, and a uh, damage of about three to five billion US dollars. This is quite a hit for this little country, which is also on the West Clark 7 list of countries that the Pentagon um, selected for regime change, which uh, which uh, Syria and Iraq were also uh, in, the, in that list and then Sudan and Libya so <clears throat> they were already targeted that is known now okay well uh, we're dealing here uh, they, are, they are dealing with 2700 tons of ammonium nitrate which is usually sold as a fertilizer I believe in this in this case uh, Al Jazeera reported that some ship was confiscated the crew just ran off and uh, they had to put that um, ammonium nitrate somewhere since 2013 so they had it in in storage for numbers of years 2700 tons of a high explosive material that is if it is slightly impure because pure ammonium nitrate will not give you all that trouble it is not that easy to get it to detonate because that's what we're dealing with this will be detonation same type of explosion that you would get with TNT or uh, RDX, PTN, uh, plastic explosive those are all detonations which means that the progress of the explosion inside the explosive is faster than the speed of sound that's the definition of a detonation as opposed to deflagration which you would have with gunpowder that makes a high explosive so much more potent than a low explosive and um, you know this this could be compared to the same same strength as TNT what you find that is that uh, ammonium nitrate is often mixed with other explosives to create new properties um, uh, after the first world war the Germans were already using uh, ammonium nitrate as a fertilizer because they, uh, they developed that technology but because of the war they, they didn't do much farming but in any case there was a big a mountain of uh, fertilizer somewhere and because of the rain it, it started caking and you couldn't really do anything with it it was too hard so somebody decided okay let's stick in a few uh, sticks of dynamite and loosen it up a little um, this is where the Germans found out that ammonium nitrate is also, besides a fertilizer, a very potent explosive. Um, suffice to say that uh, this turned into one big crater. <clears throat> so, and this, from that point on, it was also used as a high explosive. Now, I visited a laboratory in Delft here in the Netherlands, Gitmo Lowlands, where they were doing tests on explosives for military applications and other military technology they were testing that too and also they would receive samples of ammonium nitrate to be tested 
they were testing the tendency of that fertilizer to go into detonation and for that they had a, um, a special chamber which was a, a big bunker type building you could call it a type of a, a short chimney with a, um, a, a corner you had to go around through I believe there were some chains like anchor chains a whole curtain of anchor chains and then after the corner you would reach that uh, that stack type building with a big steel door they would put thick steel cylinders filled with ammonium nitrate in that little building with a booster and then a, a, a firing cap, a, a detonator. Now you could think that you could just stick in a detonator and have it go over to detonation like that but it will not be that easy for ammonium nitrate because it is not really sensitive it's a, um, a, an explosive, a high explosive of low sensitivity just like TNT um, even less I would say so for that reason you need a booster which is a highly sensitive high explosive material in between of the blasting cap the detonator and the main explosive the, the bulk uh, explosive and that high ex a highly sensitive uh, material in the booster could be tetril, could be RDX, HMX, PETN, that sort of material is used, or plastic explosives, if you could use that too, I suppose. And then you can get the ammonium nitrate to detonate. In any case, there in Delft at that laboratory, they were testing if, even with a booster, the ammonium nitrate would start to detonate and uh, they would at the end of one of those uh, explosions they would look at the cylinder and if there was not much progress beyond the booster it was considered pure enough and safe enough to be used as a fertilizer and then it was cleared to be used in agriculture. Um, so that's what they were doing and this is just to illustrate that it is not easy for ammonium nitrate to get it to detonate. So in practice uh, what you would see if you would have clear ammonium nitrate uh, and you would mix it with half a percent or one percent of diesel fuel or any other hydrocarbon type of fuel then uh, the sensitivity goes up and it is easier to get it to detonate uh, still I wonder if you could do without a booster and uh, I, I really really doubt that so uh, you have to do a little bit more than that to get it to detonate uh, but keep in mind this has been there in storage for many years so uh, I mean this this gives the chance for some people who may want Lebanon to fail to get some sort of fuel leak in the vicinity so that at the end of the whole story the ammonium nitrate is sufficiently polluted and impure and sensitized. Um, who? Uh, what, what will be the motive? Well, first of all, I already mentioned that Lebanon is mentioned in the West Clark Seven, like Syria. In Syria, right now, uh, it's reported by Vanessa Bailey that uh, the harvests are being burned down by U.S. troops. They are flying balloons, it is said, and these balloons land in a cornfield or a, a, a field of, of, of wheat, which then starts to burn and then the harvest is completely wasted. Um, they are 
they seem to want to starve the Syrian people right now. Right next to Syria is where you find Lebanon. And uh, right now, as said, as reported by Al Jazeera, they've lost uh, three months worth of wheat or grains in general um, in that explosion. So not only for Syria, but also for Lebanon, there is to be expected a food problem. Now what, because uh, the explosion took place after a fire, and what caused the fire? I don't know, but I picked up from the internet, because the ice will be, of course, on their southern neighbor country, Israel, and the uh, Syri uh, the Lebanese uh, government was quick to stress that uh, Israel had nothing to do with it, I picked up. I don't speak Arab, so I have to take other people's words for it. Um, it's a bit quick, you know, it's like after 9-11 that the US government was very quick to point out Osama bin Laden. How would you know? Or with the Moscow uh, subway, subway attacks took place, they were very quick to point to the Chechenians. It's a bit too fast in many people's eyes, including mine. But uh, the, there, there is a motive here to weaken both Lebanon and Syria and this may be the reason. Uh, close to it there was a fire, but it is said also that uh, there was a Hezbollah ammunition uh, storage that Israel was targeting. <sighs> Who knows? But Keep in mind, if, if Israel would have wanted, how easy would it have been to, first of all, uh, get the ammonium nitrate to be sufficiently polluted for it to be sensitive enough, and then to drop some high explosive strong enough to get it all to explode, with only the fire as a, as, a, as a cover story. It's speculation, I know, and please don't take my word for it. Do your own investigative work, listen to other people, and make up your own mind. Personal responsibility. But in any case, you got my few points for this time, five, the 5th of August. This is what I see. Thanks.